Hey Frag fam, Corbin here again from Northwest Scent. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about 10 fresh and clean fragrances. So these are fragrances that may be on the citrusy side or the soapy side, but in general, they're just gonna be very refreshing and they're gonna make you smell very clean and just feel like you just hopped out of the shower. Just something that if you guys are just trying to stay cool and clean smelling and just completely inoffensive, these are gonna be the ones for you. So if you guys are interested in hearing about these, please stick around. But first, let's roll that intro. Welcome back. So we're gonna dive straight into this list and starting us off at the number 10 spot, we are talking about Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. So I don't talk about this fragrance basically ever. It's just, you know, everybody knows about this fragrance at this point or this fragrance line, I should say, Blue de Chanel. But this honestly epitomizes fresh and clean fragrances. Back when this came out, the original version, I think it was in 2010, as basic smelling as it was, it really kind of you know shifted the course of fragrances towards more of these complex but very clean and just kind of basic smelling fragrances, stuff that is very, very mass appealing and we're seeing a ton of that nowadays. This is the one that started it right here, or at least this line. This is the Eau de Parfum version, so not the original Eau de Toilette, but I think this is a superior fragrance that still has that original DNA in it, but it's amplified it and it gives it better performance. With the Eau de Parfum, I do get about six to eight hours of performance, which is pretty good for this kind of genre of fragrance. And as far as what this one is about, this one has grapefruit, there is some incense, amber, there's some cedarwood, um, among some other herbs and citruses. So this honestly just kind of epitomizes fresh and clean. Like I said, I just put it here at the number 10 spot because everybody knows about Blue de Chanel at this point, but it had to be in this list. This smells very clean, somewhat aquatic, but just very, very refreshing. Again, I've tried all three of the Blue de Chanel's and the Eau de Parfum, in my opinion, is kind of the good medium between fresh and clean with a little bit more complexity and then decent performance. So again, at the number 10 spot, that was Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Next at the number nine spot, we're talking about a fragrance from a house that is very well known for having fresh and clean fragrances. They do soapy fragrances amazingly better than any other house. And this is one of the best that fits that genre. This one is from Prada and it is Prada Loam Low. Oh, so this is actually my favorite Prada Loam flanker from the ones that I've tried anyway. This is really similar to the original and at first sniff, this is somewhat redundant smelling to the original, but once you put them side by side, you do get some differences. This one is essentially the original, but with the ginger note amplified. So you get more of a crisp refreshingness from this one, which just makes it again, fresher and just better for the warmer weather. I do get a cleaner touch from this. Whereas with the original, it is fresh. It does have the sweeter side to it that reminds me a little bit of kind of like a fizzy Coca-Cola. It does have a fizziness to it. It does have some more sweetness. This one is crisper. It's not quite as sweet and it has that very clean soapy iris as the dominant note. So if you like the original Prada alone, but you're looking for something that is a little bit fresher, just more crisp and then not quite as sweet, this is the perfect one. And as of current, this is my favorite Prada Loam Flanker. I do prefer this to the original just ever so slightly. I still love the original, but if I'm trying to smell fresh and clean, this is the one I gravitate towards of the two. So a great soapy, clean fragrance from Prada at the number nine spot. Again, that was Prada Loam Low. Next at the number eight spot, we have a fragrance that is from a very well-respected niche house. Now, if you think of the freshest offering from this house, this is probably not the first one you'll think of, but this is a great medium between fresh and clean. This one is from Roja Parfums and it is Scandal, the Parfum Cologne version. Oh, guys. If you like Fougeres, you'll really, really like this one. And like I said, this is maybe not the first one you would think of as being the freshest from the house. Of course, the fragrance I'm referring to with that is Elysium. That one is very fresh and it has a ton of citruses backing it up, which just gives it this really kind of heightened sharpness and this just ultra refreshing quality to it. But you gotta remember, this video is focused on things that are fresh and clean. This one is very fresh still, but it also has that clean aspect to it as well. 
which clean can you know mean a couple of things. It could mean just like an icing cooling effect or maybe like it's a little bit soapy. In this case, you kind of get a little bit of both. Like I said, this one is a fougere, so you get a dominant note of lavender, which in this case does come across a little bit more powdery and soapy. You get a ton of lemon at the top. There's some mint in here. There's oak moss, so that lavender oak moss combo really kind of give you or contribute to that fougere quality. There is a little bit of tonka bean in here as well, but it's not too dominant. For the most part, this is fresh, a little bit soapy and icy, and you do get some nice spices in the background that make this thing just perfect. It's very well rounded in my opinion. Again, this is not spice heavy, hence why it is in this fresh and clean list. This is a modern fougere done perfectly in my opinion. It has a ton of lemon again, so you do get that nice citrusy touch making it fresh. But you also get some lavender. And again, there are some citrus, or excuse me, some herbs in here like the mint giving it that kind of green icy feeling. So this thing smells very, very clean. If you want to smell like an upscale gentleman that is just hopped out of the shower and you just smell like, you know, you're a boss basically, this is it. So again, at the number eight spot, that was Roja Parfums Scandal Parfum Cologne. Next at the number seven spot, we have a really good cheapy. Now in general, I don't really enjoy cheap fragrances and I don't generally recommend them just because with fragrance, like many other items in life, you get what you pay for. And if you pay for something that's cheap, generally it's gonna smell cheap, it's gonna smell synthetic, maybe it won't be blended very well. But in this case, while it is cheap in price, it does not smell cheap as far as the scent goes. Well, I'm not saying it does smell like a niche fragrance, which it doesn't. It does smell really nice and I don't get like a synthetic mess from this fragrance at all. This one is from Nautica and it is Voyage N83. So I've talked about this one before. I accidentally bought this when I was looking to get the original Nautica Voyage and this is, you know, a year or two ago. I do like the original Nautica Voyage somewhat, but in general, it doesn't really match the hype that it gets with me. However, this one, it is very underrated. Not many people talk about it. And I think this is the best Voyage Flanker, at least from the ones that I've tried. This one takes the green apple and then the green leaf notes from the top of the original and it replaces them with C notes. There's some pedigree and then mint here. And you even get a touch of lavender in here, which you don't have in the original. So this one is a lot more refreshing because of those oceanic notes. You get kind of an icy feeling from that mint. It is a little bit herbal, but you get a really nice soapy touch from the lavender. And there's even a little bit of cardamom in here, giving it a nice sweetness. So this isn't like a bitter fresh scent. It does have a little bit of sweetness backing it up and it is quite soapy. So something that is very aquatic, soapy clean with a little bit of sweetness, that's what you get here with this fragrance. I get decent longevity as well, about six hours, which for a sub $20 fragrance, you know, that's amazing. And like I said, this thing smells pretty high quality as well. I'm not saying it smells like a niche fragrance again, but it doesn't smell like it's a, you know, $17 bargain bin kind of fragrance either. This smells very, very nice. So if you guys want something that's cheap and just kind of a good, clean, refreshing, dumb reach fragrance, this is one I will always recommend. So again, at the number seven spot, that was Nautica Voyage N83. So coming in at the number six spot, we're gonna dive straight into this. We are talking about Givenchy Gentleman Cologne. So there is something so alluring with this fragrance, even though it is on the very fresh side. It, again, it has this kind of an intoxicating trait about it and it is very, very addictive smell. And this is one where I'll just catch myself sniffing the atomizer repeatedly for this. You know, I'll go through my cabinet. This will be one of the bottles I pluck and just want to smell because it has a really, really nice smell to it. It's also similar to John Barbados Artisan Pure, which has been discontinued. So the prices on that are going up and it's getting harder and harder to find. Again, this is a good alternative to that fragrance. I don't own that one, but from what I can remember with the scent structure and how it smelled, this is very similar. Not only that, it does smell higher quality to me. So if you guys have been looking for that fragrance just because everybody's been talking about it, you don't need to look any farther really. Just go for this one. It's a good alternative. And like I said, it is higher quality smelling. Not only that, this is a really good affordable fragrance as well. You can find these 100 milliliter size bottles for under $50. I think I bought this one for about 42. So you don't have to look very far to find it under $50, which is about the going rate for Artisan Pure anyway. So a good alternative to that fragrance. As far as what the notes are for this, it is pretty simple. You get dominant notes of bergamot and then pedigree with a dominant note of iris. And then there is some ambroxan kind of writing down underneath. And in this case, the iris is more on the soapy clean side, just as it is for fragrances like Prada Loam, for example. So it's not heavy and waxy. And 
The bergamot here, very fresh. The pedigree gives it this nice kind of herbal woody smell on the greener side. And the ambroxan isn't super detectable in the smell, but it gives us this fragrance very nice longevity. Even, it, even though it is on the fresher side, I get about seven to eight hours of longevity, which is amazing, especially for something as affordable as this fragrance is. So if you guys want something, again, that's just a dumb reach fragrance, very inoffensive and smells very high quality, just a nice pleasant scent, this is a great one. So again, at the number six spot, that was Givenchy Gentleman Cologne. Next at the number five spot, we have an extremely underrated fragrance. This does not get much talk in the community at all. However, the people that have tried it absolutely love this fragrance. This is definitely one of the ones that I recommend you guys try because I think you will really enjoy this as well. This one is from Pierre Guillaume and it's called Le Musk and Le Pou. Oh, guys, this is such a good, good fragrance. I did a first impressions on this channel and in that impressions, I wasn't hugely impressed by it. However, I made the mistake of testing it on paper, which again, was a mistake. You can't always test fragrances on paper because in this case, fragrances like this, where they're really designed to be worn, they fall completely flat, 2D on paper, but they really open up and become three-dimensional once you try them and they kind of mix with your skin chemistry and they heat up. As far as this fragrance goes, again, Le Musk. This is a musk-centric fragrance and it is based around a nice, clean white musk note. It also has some aldehydes giving it this kind of fizzy, airy effect where it really does kind of push out and has good projection, but it's not overly loud and dense so it's not gonna be something that's gonna be off-putting to people around you you also get rosemary mixed in here giving it a nice green herbal quality and rosemary in general does come across on the cleaner side and less on like that you know the dirty kind of leafy side there's also some ylang ylang in here and then even bergamot so you get some nice florals light florals the bergamot isn't overly pronounced but it's there giving it a nice bit of freshness again this really focuses on the rosemary the aldehydes and then the musk and basically how this fragrance is kind of supposed to come across, at least based on the perfumer's description, is it's supposed to smell like human skin that has been rubbed with some rosemary and other herbs. And that probably does sound really weird, but again, this is something that is supposed to smell a little bit clean and animalic, but on the kind of airier and lighter side with some fresh qualities as well. And that's how this one is. Again, it's clean, it's a little bit fizzy, it has these kind of herbal qualities to it, it's fresh, but it also kind of has this milky quality to it as well, which is really hard to describe. Again, it's not dense at all. This is a really light fragrance. It wears ultra light. This is something you can spray super heavy, but it is very sensual. It is very clean and it is a little bit on that fresh side as well. So this is a unique fresh and clean fragrance, but one you guys really, really need to check out. This is an amazing under the radar fragrance. So again, at the number five spot, that was Le Musk and Le Po from Pierre Guillaume. At the number four spot, we have a fragrance that is about as clean as you can get in fragrance. This honestly just smells like soap. This one is from Prada, and this is called Amber Porum. So this is the second Prada fragrance I had on this list, and I definitely could have included more. Prada is really good at making fresh, clean fragrances, usually on the soapy side, but I didn't want to you know, saturate this video with Prada fragrances. I had to include these two though, because again, Prada Loam Low and this one are amazing, soapy, clean men's fragrances. This is even soapier than Prada Loam. It has a little bit of sweetness, but not much. It is a lot more on just that kind of dense soapy side with very little sweetness. And honestly, if you look at the note breakdown for this fragrance, you're not gonna get a good idea of how it smells because this has a lot of notes in it, including a lot of darker notes. There is myrrh, there is some saffron, there's vanilla, there's labdanum and leather. Labdanum does come across leathery as well. So if you saw the note breakdown, you would think this would be a very dark fragrance and it's not. This is very clean, somewhat light, but it does have this dense soapy quality to it. And honestly does smell like if you've smelled a bar Bar of soap, some just any kind of generic like bar of soap, something you would find in a hotel. This smells very similar to those in style. This does honestly smell higher quality than that. I do compare this to like expensive bars of soap, but that's really just how it, how it comes across. It's not an overly expensive fragrance. You can find full bottles of this for about 40 to $50 for the 100 milliliter size. And I think it's a great buy at that price because again, this is a fragrance where if you wanna smell very inoffensive and just very clean and fresh, this is about as easy wearing as you can get as far as that goes. So a great fresh and clean soapy men's fragrance. This is one you guys really need to check out if you like soapy fragrances. So again, at the number four spot, that was Prada Amber Porum. 
At the number three spot, we have a fragrance from the Hugo Boss bottled line of fragrances. Now, that line is not known for being fresh and clean by any means. In general, they are all on the sweeter and spicier side. However, this is the fresh offering from that, that line. And while that may sound kind of weird and just a bizarre thing to attempt, it honestly worked. This is a really good fresh and clean fragrance. Again, this is from Hugo Boss and it is Boss Bottled Tonic. So you can definitely get the Boss Bottle DNA here. It does smell like a flanker. You get that, that apple pie vibe with that sweetness, but it is quite subdued. This has a very small touch of that cinnamon and that sweetness. And of course that apple is still detectable, but again, it is quite subdued. This is really more of its own fragrance rather than a flanker. So it has more differences than similarities to the original Boss Bottle. What you really get a lot of is the bitter orange grapefruit, and then there is some lemon, I believe, with a touch of ginger as well. And the ginger, again, it comes across nice and crisp with a little bit of a tartness. The bitter orange gives it kind of that bittery touch, which I was talking about earlier. And then that grapefruit and that lemon just work perfectly, kind of mingling in with these fresher notes. This thing is very, very refreshing, very citrusy. It does have some geranium in it, which to me gives it a small dose of soapiness, not a ton. This isn't on the same level as the Prada fragrances as far as soapiness goes, but you do get a little bit of it. And if you kind of want an idea of how this smells, this smells similar to Versace Man Au Fresh. It smells like that fragrance with the Boss Bottle DNA kind of implemented into it. So that is a good alternative to this one. And I could have definitely included that fragrance in this list. However, for this list, I did want to include some different fragrances, stuff that maybe doesn't get mentioned quite as much. And this was a good one or a good alternative to that fragrance. And so that's why I wanted to mention that this one here. Again, Versace Mano Fresh, that's a great fragrance and a good alternative to this one. But I think this is a little bit more unique and it's equally fresh and clean. So a good fresh and clean fragrance from the Boss Bottled line of fragrances. If you like that DNA, but you're looking for something fresher, this is a great, great option. So again, at the number three spot, that was Hugo Boss Bottled Tonic. Next, at the number two spot, we have another niche fragrance. This one is from Creed and it's called Himalaya. So I like to call this the neglected twin brother of Silver Mountain Water, which is another fragrance from Creed. They have a lot of similarities, but they do deviate a little bit. That fragrance is very fresh and clean as well, but it also has a dominant kind of inky note, which comes from this tea note that it uses. This is fresher and cleaner, and it's missing that inkiness, which I really do like. This does have a slight metallic touch to it, so if you don't like fragrances that have a little bit of this metallic feel, you may not like this one, but it's not very pronounced. This is again just very fresh and clean. It has a very simple note breakdown. You have three different citruses at the top. You get a nice clean white musk. There's sandalwood in here. And then of course that signature ambergris that Creed uses in basically all of their fragrances. And so a simple note breakdown and it is kind of a simple fragrance, but it is done amazingly. This smells very high quality. It does kind of have this slight soapiness to it. There's a little bit of creaminess to it from that sandalwood, but it is very citrus heavy. And it does have, again, a little bit of that metallic feel to it. I don't know which note to attribute that metallic -y feel to, but again, it is somewhat subdued. It's not very heavy. This is just citrusy and clean with a slight soapiness to it. If you like something that has a little bit of a woodiness to it, a little bit creamy, but very citrusy and clean, this is a great fragrance. And again, if you like Silver Mountain Water, but maybe you're looking for something with the DNA just being changed up a little bit, this is a great option. They do smell quite similar and you can definitely tell that they were kind of probably inspired by one another with some changes made. This also, I've heard smells similar to Paco Rabanne uh, XS, which I have not tried, but I've heard, again, they have very similar scent structures. I'm sure this one smells a lot higher quality though. So if you tried that fragrance, you might have an idea of how this one smells. Again, I have not tried Paco Rabanne XS. That's just what I've heard. But again, this is an amazing fragrance. This is one of my favorite creeds. It's in my top three. I think I'll probably, as of current, this is probably my third favorite creed. And that says a lot because I've tried over 20 different creed fragrances. This thing smells amazing. So again, at the number two spot, that was Creed Himalaya. And finally, at the number one spot, we're talking about a fragrance from Christian Dior. Now, of all the fresh offerings that I've tried from them, this is absolutely my favorite. This one is called Eau Sauvage Cologne. Oh my gosh, guys, this is an amazing fragrance. Not overly complex, but it just smells so nice to me. 
Now, if you've smelled the original Eau Sauvage, this honestly doesn't have a ton of resemblance to that fragrance. This smells more similar to Dior Homme Cologne, which if you haven't tried that fragrance, it's a very simple citrusy musky fragrance. It honestly smells like a glass of like iced lemonade or like lemon water. A lot of people do say lemonade. I don't necessarily agree with that just because in general, lemonade is sweet and it's, you know, it's on the sweeter side. This fragrance and Dior Homme Cologne aren't sweet at all. They're very fresh and musky with some like herbal qualities. This one is more on the herbaceous side than that fragrance, but it is equally refreshing. It has a ton of citruses. You get some Calabrian bergamot. There's grapefruit in here, mandarin orange. Again, you get pettigrain as that herbal quality. There are some florals in here. And then even in the base, there's a little bit of vetiver, which if you don't like vetiver, don't worry. This isn't like a vetiver forward fragrance. It doesn't have anything dirty about it. You do get a little bit of kind of a green and grassy woody smell from the vetiver but I think the pedigree is more pronounced here, mixing with those florals, giving this a nice kind of soapy-ish quality in a way. But more than anything, this is extremely fresh. That bergamot, grapefruit, and mandarin orange at the top, they all work together, and they give you one of the best citrus forward fragrances that I've ever smelled. So a great high heat fragrance that is fresh and clean, definitely more dominant on the fresh side, but still very clean as well. This is one you guys need to check out. I don't know if it's been discontinued or not. It's really hard to find online nowadays. You have to search high and low just to find a bottle. But if you can find one, this is such a good fragrance. So again, at the number one spot, that was Dior's Eau Sauvage Cologne. Well, there you guys go. Those are my top 10 fresh and clean fragrances for 2021. If you guys enjoyed this list, I would really appreciate dropping a like just to show your support. And then that way more people can see my videos on YouTube. Additionally, if you want to write a comment, just let me know your thoughts, as well as maybe some new video ideas or topics, that would be great too. And since you're down there doing all that stuff, if you have not already, if you could hit the subscribe button and then the bell notification, that would be amazing. That way you stay up to date on new videos whenever they get released going forward. But with all that out of the way, that's all I really have for you guys today. So I hope you have a good one. Stay healthy, stay wealthy, and smell great.